What's up guys? Today we have a very special video for you. So there's a wood fire potter that is close to me, like an hour and 10 minutes from my house and it's even closer to my parents' summer cabin. I connected with them and we are firing a wood fire. So super pumped. So we came up here and glazed some of the pots. I have 30 or 40 pots that are gonna be in the kiln. Uh, this is only the fourth time that they've fired this kiln. It's gonna be a salt kiln. So similar to Matthew Kelly's that I did last year, but much smaller, not much smaller, maybe half. Anyway, so yeah, let's do it. All right, here we are. All the wood for the wood kiln. So this is the, the chamber that we're gonna be firing. It's got stacked top to bottom. This one we're gonna fire in May, I think. friends we are here at the wood fire main prairie studio kiln is loaded and full got a lot of pots in there we started with a lot of pots so now we just gotta build the door start the fire i don't really know but it's exciting stuff super excited So it's 32, it'll get up to, what, what's going 10? 22, 23? 23, 50. 23, 50? Yeah, but the parameter may not read that. Yeah, right. All based on those cones. What are you doing? So, that was awesome. Got the kiln loaded. Got the kiln started all by noon on Thursday. So then I work a shift tomorrow at 6 a.m. So I'll be back here tomorrow at 6 a.m. So thanks so much to JD and Megan at Main Prairie Studio. It's been awesome learning. I'm asking tons of questions. Firing in Minnesota has its difficulties compared to North Carolina, which has a little better weather. But uh, got so many pots in right away when I walked in. I was like, wow, that is a lot of work to fit in that kiln. And most of it got in. So pretty cool. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow, 6 a.m. Actually, probably more like 5.30. Shh. Nice and warm by this kiln. Whew, heat's coming up. So I got here at 6 a.m. this morning. Kiln was at 1,500. Now we're knocking on 1,700. 50 to 100 degrees an hour is it what we're trying to accomplish. So that's like every three or four minutes we load wood in the kiln. The temperature kind of drops and then it goes back up. And like sit next to a nice warm kiln. We're here now, today is Saturday. So this is my second shift, 6 a.m. to noon. Oh, the pyrometer says 1953 right now. It's been as high as 1989. So we're getting there, making some, making some good progress. Basically what we do is the temperature peaks, and then right around the peak, then we add more wood in, and then the temperature comes down, it drops when the flame is like burning and then it slowly starts to come back up. And so hopefully like the peak just keeps getting higher and higher. That's kind of the, 
the goal here. So 54, hopefully we climb back up to like 1980-ish. We'll load some more wood in. Here, I'll show you. 1954, 55, so now we just started climbing. Look at all that wood. I think JD said that for this firing, it should take about four sections. It is tighter, okay. I mean, it's difficult. The air. So like if we open up the damper, the chimney heats up. Yes. It pulls, pulls a little bit more. Front. Pulls harder. Pulls harder. And we want to pull more oxygen in, so we want it to pull harder. We do want it to pull harder, but we don't want it to pull so hard that all the heat comes across the floor and out of the chimney. Yes. So, so little that's, adjustments. That's the balance. That's nice. That was a good stoke. Yeah. That was a good that's stoke. Really good. These two pots. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like now as this is clearing out okay. a little bit, right? Yeah. So we can see the cones. That and that. Okay, cool. It's kind of a guide. But you don't want to open that up too much. Not a lot. Yeah. Feeling ready? Yep. Okay. Just don't put it through the back wall, huh? <laughs> Hey guys, all right, so it's a week later and I, we're headed back up to unload the kiln. So they actually ended up firing. I wasn't there when it got up to the top temp. They salted it, so they put salt in the kiln. Uh, they did send a few videos. Okay. okay. Uh, but now I just drove up about an hour away from my house and I am not on a busy road right now, don't worry. I am uh, just pulling up to their house and very excited to see the results. There's a lot of salt on that guy. <laughs> yeah. Nice, that's sweet. That's super cool. All right, guys, so we're back in the studio after the wood fire. We got all the pots. Oh, it was so fun. It was such a great experience to experience another wood fire. There's something so special about it. Like that's how pottery was made for thousands and thousands and thousands of years before we had the ability to use propane or the electricity or whatever. So it's just a very like, you kind of feel like you're part of the beginning of pottery or like way before. And so it's amazing the tools we have now, like cones and pyrometers and you know stuff to measure the temperature and everything. But it's still like you feel like you're just connected to the roots of pottery. So before we have a bunch of pots around here, I just wanna talk through a few things. A few of the differences between the North Carolina firing that I did last year. I felt like the ratio of pots that didn't quite work out that needed to be refired was a little higher than when I did it with Matthew Kelly, which they're still, this kiln is still new to them. Thanks so much to JD and uh, Megan at Main Prairie Studio. That's where the studio was. Uh, they were super nice, super knowledgeable, uh, just great people, really good people. So I'm happy to have the experience to get to know them, get to know some other potters, uh, Heap, Jake, Jody, there were kind of six of us that, you know, Megan and JD were the husband and wife that lived there. And then there was four of us others that were part of this uh, wood firing. So a few of my favorite pieces. These are the mugs that came out really, really nicely. Got a ton of great, like this one just has so much interest and depth and the salt really connected on this one. Uh, there, And then look at how the color changes from there to there, so cool. So that's one of my favorites. These carved ones turned out really well again. Um, everything on the wood fire has to be put up on wads. And so you'll see on the bottom, um, like it's up on a wad and then the wad falls off. So that's another carved one. But then sometimes you can put it on its side. So this was a side fired mug. So that's where you can see the wads. Couple other really cool ones. 
you know, not the same colors as my typical pottery. This one has a ton of salt work on it. Um, super cool. Just the feeling of it is really amazing, the texture. Uh, another carved one. I did quite a few of those because I loved how they turned out when I did that wood fire in North Carolina. Um, and then some really good salt. So in wood fire kilns, I'll typically you won't glaze everything. You know how like my typical pottery, the all of it's glazed, right? I mean, you, there's just a huge difference between the electric fired kilns that, or the electric fire pots that I normally do and the wood fire pots that you get out. So very cool to have the opportunity to do that. A uh, couple of ones that didn't work out very well. These were ones that came out that really didn't work out very well. This was a Tomoku glaze. So then I actually reglazed, I had two of the same, reglazed it in the wood, in the electric kiln to cone eight and it came out like this. So I'll refire this one as well so it comes out like that. A um, couple of the carved ones that I'm gonna refire, it just didn't feel like the glaze got mature. Uh, it's rough, you know, just didn't quite get to temp. So these are all pots that I have already refired, which I was really excited about. Like. You know, something like this came out and it was really, actually I know exactly what it looked like. So this one was glazed with a really similar glaze to this and I refired it and it came out really well in the electric kiln. A couple other ones like these bowls turned out really nicely. Um, that reduction in the clays turned out really good. This one was another one. Got a lot of salt on this one. So they were really weren't that good and then I refired them and they Turned out great. A couple of them I put more glaze on, which I kind of wish I wouldn't have done that actually, but this one planter turned out really nice. And then I had a bunch of little shot cups in there, which a couple of them turned out really cool. This one like, it's awesome. One of my favorite like parts of the whole kiln turned it that blue. And then again, I side fired. And just, yeah, some, some cool stuff. Another side fired one. This was, I had my fingers to use for the dip and I just like left the finger marks there, which I thought was kind of cool. So yeah, once again, I'm struck with, should I build a wood kiln? It was so fun, but I would love to experience it as my own kiln, which I think I still will at some point, but it might be years. It might, it might need to fall in my lap. So if you are a potter, you know a potter that has a wood kiln that wants to get rid of it, take it down. That's the thing about this wood kiln that JD has here is, the bricks are actually from a different wood kiln that he had built. He just disassembled it, brought all the bricks to his new spot. And so all these bricks had been fired, you know, I think he said 50, 55 or 60 times he's fired these bricks before in a different kiln setup. So yeah, I'm still thinking a lot about it. I think these pots, these wood fire pots will be available in our next restock, which is April 3rd. Right, Sunday, April 3rd is our next restock, which these wood fire pots will all be available then. And I think any wood fire pot that I sell, I wanna put that money towards my own building of a wood fire. So if you buy a wood fire pot, you just, you know that you are supporting a future goal of potentially a wood fire kiln. It's just such a big endeavor. Those wood fire kilns are so different than, you think, you know, you can buy an electric kiln for three or 4,000 bucks, set it up, you plug it in, you get an electrician to wire it, which, I mean, that's its own, you know, thing, but the wood fire is just on a whole different level, different scale of work, different scale of like, you know, you gotta have a community of potters around to fire it. It's really difficult to fire on your own. Um, so it's not something that you can just be like, yeah, I think I wanna build a wood fire. I mean, you could. There are people out there that would. And you would think I might be that kind of person and maybe I will. But anyway, it was very fun. Super grateful to be a part of it and uh, grateful that I could bring you guys along and that you guys are watching. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out these pots. There's probably 30 or so wood fire pots that'll be available on April 3rd, as well as another, you know, 100 or so electric fired. So maybe, maybe a gas fired kiln, I don't know. But thanks for listening to me rant. I love you. I hope that you are enjoying the world that you have built around you. So that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.